Before this peel is done, it's important first to thoroughly cleanse the skin. And this is done using two damp squares of 4x4 gauze with cleanser added, foamed up, made into two squares, and then worked in circular fashion over the face. The importance of using gauze is to ensure that the skin is cleansed thoroughly, removing oil, makeup, and any debris that might be on the skin. In between the cleansing, the skin is then rinsed thoroughly before a second cleanse is performed. The temperature of the water is always either cool or tepid. The reason we don't use warm water is we don't want to overly stimulate blood circulation, which might increase the penetration of the peel. In order to maintain effective hygiene control, you will notice that the therapist is wearing gloves. Second cleanse is now being done. You might notice the rosy hue on the skin, which is caused by the use of gauze. After the second cleanse, the skin is then rinsed using a clean square of dampened gauze. and then blotted to remove excess moisture. The Woods Lamp Analysis is a crucial part of the treatment. It enables the therapist to determine what is going on with the client's skin. The Woods Lamp shows up oil, the depth of pigmentation, hypersensitivity, and stratum corneum buildup. An added benefit of using the Woods Lamp prior to the treatment is that it helps the therapist determine how compliant the patient has been using their vitamin A preparation at home. This can be seen as a yellow cast. Next, we degrease the skin. And this is done using an alcohol wipe. It's an important part of the treatment because without thoroughly degreasing the skin, you cannot ensure uniform peel penetration. Next, we apply Vaseline, first to the eyebrows to protect then to the bottom lashes and the outer corner of the eyes to prevent tearing. We next apply Vaseline to the border of the lips. And in the case of any areas of sensitivity around the flare of the nostrils, And now to the peel. In a glass dish, a three mil amount of peel is applied to a cotton pad or a square of gauze. This is then worked over the face, beginning at the forehead, working down to the jaw. This is repeated on the other side of the face and then the inside of the face is filled in beginning at the flare of the nostril, out to the ears. The peel is then wiped over the nose and the whole process should take no longer than one minute. Using the same cotton pad or piece of gauze, problem areas can also be targeted. On subsequent treatments, only with Fitzpatrick one and two skins, a further three mils can be applied all over the face. But once again, only on Fitzpatrick one and two skins that have been slow to respond. Being a salicylic acid based peel, this peel is quite heat intensive. So it's important that the therapist either has a fan 
or something to fan the patient with. On a scale of one to 10, this peel often climbs to an intensity of between eight and 10. So it's important to communicate with the patient to check her levels of discomfort. Salicylic acid-based peels are self-limiting peels. So this peel cuts out on its own after five minutes. You will notice the formation of a white powder on the face, which is normal for a salicylic acid peel. This just shows crystallization of the product on the skin, and it's often referred to as a pseudo frost. Salicylic acid peels are not rinsed off the face, so the next procedure would be to remove the Vaseline from the eyebrows, the lips, and under the eyes. Post peel, it's equally important to support the skin, and so an application of multi B serum is applied to the face. Redless serum can also be applied over the top of multi B, but this is optional. The final application is a good sunscreen. The skin must be protected post peel before the patient leaves the clinic. For three hours post peel, the patient is to apply nothing to the face. The only makeup that is allowed to be used post peel is mineral makeup. Their home care regime for the next few days will consist of mild facial cleanser, AM and PM, the Multi B serum, and or Redless as required to be used AM and PM. And both of these will help to support the inflammatory phase of wound healing. A physical sunscreen is essential, such as Envirostat. No deep clean cleanser, AHA preparations or retinoid based preparations are to be used for the next 72 hours. The only kind of makeup that can be used is mineral makeup, as talc based makeup can harbour bacteria. Over the next few days, the patient may notice that their skin becomes slightly red, but also it may begin to tighten and darken. And this usually follows shedding. Where shedding occurs, it can vary from a light dandruff to a moderate shed. Whether the skin experiences shedding or not, all skins benefit equally from this peel. 72 hours post peel, the patient can return to their normal home care regime.